So you might be wondering to yourself, Anna, why are you wearing a red beanie? You're inside. You're in Arizona. It's not like it's that cold. Recent events have occurred where I might have made questionable decisions regarding the state of my hair. I think I've been stuck inside for a little too long. Just maybe, um, that's all I'm gonna say, but don't, don't, don't ask about that. Don't talk about the hat. Don't comment anything about me. D just pretend I don't have hair. Actually, you probably have more questions if I suddenly was bald. Um, just don't, just don't. Now, a couple months back, I made a video talking about all the dumb purchases I made when I was first starting to get into makeup and I really didn't know what I was doing or what I wanted. And I thought that video was really fun, so I wanted to do it again. I also was wearing the same lipstick in that video, so maybe it's a tradition now if I do another one of these. Um, but I just think it's funny looking back at all the things that I've learned of what not to buy. I think it is a healthy practice to reflect on past mistakes so that you can learn from them and kind of just draw knowledge. It's also just really funny talking about stupid things I've done. Um, first off, when I <laughs> went back to watch my original video, I <laughs> could not stop laughing. I managed to reference the Backpack Kids famous quote, like when will you learn that your actions have consequences, in perfect pitch. So you're telling me that if I'm trying to remember a key that a song's in, I, for the life of me, I can't figure it out. I'm like, I don't remember. I'm probably singing in my own key. I don't know what the original key is off the top of my head. I'd have to listen to it. And then I'm like, oh, okay, we're doing this now. But when it comes to memes, then I could do, I'm just gonna play the clip. It's, it's too perfect. Girl, your skin is dry. Why are you mattifying it? Why do you keep on buying this? When will you learn? When will you learn? That your actions have consequences! <laughs> How did I... I... I did not watch the video before that. I literally just referenced it off the top of my head and I managed to match his pitch and tone perfectly. I don't know what that says about me. Let's just get straight into the video. So the first two products I want to talk about are kind of my response to seeing the trend and influx of contouring products and just everyone saying you need to contour. When I was first getting into makeup several years ago, that's kind of the sphere I walked into. I first started watching makeup videos through Nikki Tutorials, just reacting to like dumb Scylla sponges and stuff like that. So I wasn't like in the same part of YouTube that I am now. It was very much just like, look at all this crazy stuff, ha <laughs> weird makeup. Um, and that was, that was what I was watching. It wasn't makeup reviews, it wasn't panning, it wasn't minimalism or mindful, it wasn't any of that. Uh, and so it kind of caused me to buy some things that I probably shouldn't have. But this first one was the Wet n Wild Contouring Palette in the shade Dolce de Leche. A lot of people had this. And the formula was fine. But soon after I realized, I don't, I'm not into this. Like, <sighs> the contouring shade was too warm for a contour for me, but it also was just a bit too deep. And I didn't know what I was supposed to do with the banana powder because it was darker than my skin tone. And I, it was just like too heavy for me. And I also, I don't know what I was thinking. I used this brush to apply it and expected to like that. This is the Real Techniques contouring brush. Now I use this to apply my concealer now because it is quite dense. These synthetic bristles actually blend out cream products really well, but this is, really harsh and I was like blending trying to almost use it as a bronzer I don't know but once I got the butter bronzer I ended up decluttering it to a friend because I was like I'm just not gonna use this I always reach for the butter bronzer that wasn't the worst purchase I'd ever made it was only five dollars but it definitely spoke to like what I liked and that wasn't it but this next one is an even dumber 
sillier purchase and I think I bought it at Marshall's I don't know if y'all have heard of the brand Ellen Tracy because I've only ever seen it at places like Marshall's and TJ Maxx and stuff but I bought this contouring cheek kit um it came with the scratchiest brush ever I knew it was bad even back then I was like this is trash goodbye but it came with these three tiny little compacts one that was I think supposed to be contour, one that was blush, and then one that was highlighter. Can... I don't, I convinced my mom, I was like, oh my gosh, I want it so much. Like I just saw it at Marshalls or something like that. And I was just like, could you buy it for me? And she's like, okay, whatever. Let's ignore the glaring problem of me buying it spontaneously and not knowing anything about the brand or the product. When I looked at these pictures to put up in this video, I didn't remember the three pans of like contour in it. Apparently it had like three pans of bronzer and then a brush and then it had the separate little compacts. I don't remember those existing. So, no memory. I guess I decluttered it straight away. I don't know what was going on there, but that highlighter, that, I should be ashamed to be called a highlighter. What? Let me tell you what that was. That was silver glitter. Chunky, zero pigment, silver glitter. It was powdery and glitter. Oh my gosh. What? Yeah, that didn't last long in my collection. Let me tell you that. That was atrocious. The blush was fine. I had no, it was just a matte blush, but the color was way too like dark and pigmented for me. I remember one time I was curious and so since it was like this tiny circular pan, I literally just went like this and placed it to like do those little doll cheeks. That was funny. And I like wore two pigtails just cause I don't, I was just feeling weird that day. So I tried it, that was funny, but I didn't keep it that much afterwards cause I just, it, it wasn't the right color for me. And then the bronzer contour or whatever, Again, way too dark for me. And I ended up decluttering it. I, like, not that long after. That was such a dumb, what was I thinking? Just like buying a random brand out of nowhere? Especially with the cover it had. Like, I, should I really trust something that has that as a cover? In a similar vein to buying something that was like on trend, but I, I got like a cheaper alternative that didn't work out. Y'all remember when the Artiste brushes were all the rage? Like, everyone was losing their shit over those. They were... Like, okay, they face you, so it's easier to apply because using a normal brush is so difficult for most people. I don't understand. But also that was when very full coverage matte makeup was in, in terms of foundation and concealer, so it makes sense that a really dense brush would be on trend for applying your foundation and concealer or whatever, because I know they came with different sizes. I don't know, I didn't understand the eyeshadow ones. I, I, what? So I didn't buy an Artiste brush because they were expensive, but I ended up buying an off-brand one at Marshalls or something like that, that looked like it, and I used it for several months and let me tell you that wasn't the best that wasn't the best idea it was just so f dense and firm it was just like dragging on your face and it wasn't the best at blending I, I just mm. this next one again there's a theme of buying things without doing any research beforehand and just buying things on a whim you're like oh cool maybe that's gonna work Half the time it doesn't because you can't just close your eyes and grab something from a shelf and hope that it works. Like, you gotta, you gotta put some effort into knowing what you're buying. But didn't know that back then, I guess. I think this is the only thing I've ever bought from Hard Candy, and it was their brightening setting spray. Um, I don't know if it did that much for my face in general. The sprayer was kind of intense and like not the finest of mists but that wasn't the problem it smelled so bad like really cheap sweet plasticky like a cheap toy it was 
I hated it, um, but I used it up completely. Ended up using it as like a primer near the end because it was so like aggressive and kind of uneven and blotchy with the sprayer. And I think eventually it started breaking down my makeup. It, yeah, no, I would not recommend that. I'm pretty sure one of the top ingredients was like alcohol because I could smell the kind of alcoholic scent to it. And no. It's a no from me. It's a resounding no. This next one, one of the things that keeps my mindset so critical of makeup and helps me stay a bit more minimalistic in my purchasing habits is that I keep telling myself, okay, so you like this, but it's not quite right. Do not settle for something that is not right for you. Just because you almost like it or it's almost, don't settle unless if it's like, yes, that is the one I want. Because of how concentrated and saturated the makeup industry is today and the market is so large, it is very likely that you will find something that is better and more suited to your taste, your desires, somewhere else. You might have to wait a little bit, but I'm sure you'll find something that is closer, that is better. Don't settle for something that's like, oh, I th it's kind of what I wanted. You gotta, you gotta wait for the one, you know? It's kind of like relationships, even though I've never been in a serious romantic relationship, so I'm not one to talk at all. But like, you, you wouldn't want to marry someone that's like almost right for you. You know what I mean? If you, if you want to be committed, you gotta find someone who's right for you. So in that vein, at my mom's house, I bought this NYX Mega Shine Lip Gloss in the shade Beige. I remember back in the day, Jessica Braun was raving over this, and it was a really pretty, like, pinky lip gloss. I really liked pinker lip glosses back then, so it really suited my taste, and the formula was really nice. If my memory serves me correctly, that had, like, 11 mils of product? It was a ton of lip gloss, so I never finished it up. I was going to. I was panning it. A couple months before I started my channel was when I lost it at an airport. It was in my toiletry bag, you know, when like you take it out. And I did, I had something in there that I had to take out so like put, so they could scan it. Um, and I guess it fell out of that bag because I never saw it after that airport trip. And I was annoyed because I was finally seeing windowing on the side. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm making progress. I can finally see that I'm using it. And then I lost it. So that was, that was kind of sad. But um, before I lost it, I really liked that gloss. And so I wanted the same gloss at my dad's house just because I lived at two places and it seemed convenient to have, you know, one in each house that I liked instead of constantly bringing it back and forth. I went to Ulta or I don't know where I went to where they sold NYX, but I saw that they had the same line of lip glosses, but they didn't have the shade beige at that store. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll just get a different color. I got the shade T Rose. I'm pretty sure I wore it less than five times in public. I wore it a couple times trying it on, trying to convince myself that I like it. I just don't like bright pink lips. I, and I learned that partially. It took a while for me to actually figure out I don't like bright pink lips, but it was just nothing wrong. With, nothing was wrong with the color. I just never found myself drawn to it. I just, it wasn't the same. So that's when I realized I just because I didn't have the right color, it doesn't mean you should just pick a different color and hope that you'll like it just as much as the first one. Like wait to find the right one for you. So not, not the smartest purchase on my part, but I learned something. This next one might be one of the oldest purchases in this video. Like it was bought before I even got into makeup. That was when I just wore makeup as a functional thing. I don't remember buying it. I just remember having it and then decluttering it. I don't know how I got into my life, but I'm pretty sure I bought it because I don't remember someone giving it to me. Anyways, it was this Maybelline quad. I'm putting up the picture of the one I think it was. My memory is a bit hazy. It was a neutral kind of coolish tone quad. That was not good quality. And I didn't know much about eyeshadow, but 
I knew I could tell some, I don't really like this. The shimmers were so lackluster. And back then I didn't have as much skill to make it work. So if it didn't work, I was like, I don't know what to do with this. Like I probably could have thought of things to use it as if you know I waited a year, but it was just not good. And the colors weren't inspiring or interesting. It was just like blah browns. Yeah, I don't remember buying that, but I just remember like keeping it for a while and being like, why do I still have this? And I was like, no, I'll keep it. Eventually I was like, just throw it away. This is trash. <laughs> so yeah, um, I feel like everyone has done that in their lives. You know, like they bought like a neutral palette when they're first getting into makeup and then they're like, oh, this is kind of trash. So This next one is another instance of me buying something without any previous research. So I was just going in blind and not the best strategy, let me tell you. Um, it was the CoverGirl Ready Set Gorgeous Concealer. I think it was one of those that was advertised with Katy Perry. Um, but I was just like in the store like, I need a concealer. That one, that one looks like a concealer. That was my thought process. So I bought a concealer. The color was fine, I think. It might have been a bit too light for me, but it was so watery and just barely any pigment just very underwhelming and I think I bought another concealer from CoverGirl the same kind of situation where I was just like I need a concealer let's just buy that one and it was one with like a bronzy top and it was a similar situation where it was very watery not very pigmented I don't know what CoverGirl's problem was for a while there they just had very watery not very pigmented concealers up until the undercover one with like the stripes um yeah, that was just one of the things where you want to look up some reviews or something. I didn't really know much about the makeup YouTube blogging world. So speaking of concealer, this transition doesn't make much sense, but I'll explain. So I mentioned in my previous video where I was talking about things on my wish list, where I at one point bought the Wet n Wild Coal Eyeliner that was the white one. It was one of those really long eyeliners and it was just, you know, a typical pencil. And I bought it because, you know, white's supposed to make your eyes look whiter, but then I realized it just made the actual whites of my eyes look less white, and then it just kind of looked weird. Um, so I didn't like it that much, and I was like, what am I supposed to do with it? And legit for a while, the way I used it was I mixed it with my concealer that was too dark for me. I think at the time I was using the Maybelline age rewind concealer that was actually a pretty good formula back when i tried it um but i bought one that was a bit too dark for me and so i literally just put concealer on and then i like scribbled the white eyeliner and i remember it working okay like it wasn't that bad most people would have probably been like i'll just use it as an eyeshadow base not me circa 2017 coloring it on my face to help the concealer match me better oh oh my gosh I mean, I was creative. I gotta give myself some credit. And the last one on this list, in one of my first videos, I talked about things that I decluttered in 2019. And this is one of those on that list. And it is the LA Girl Quad. I think it was called their Lux Eye Quads. And this one was the Glamorize Quad, which was the purple one. And it was another one where it's just, I was at Ulta. My thought process was at the intelligence level of a puppy, not even a full grown dog, a puppy, just pretty purple. I like purple, purple is pretty, that is purple. I will buy, give me purple. So I bought that. One thing I really liked was the packaging. I mean, it was just basic packaging. It was like an upgraded Wet n Wild because it was actually thicker, but the closure was just so satisfying, like the click it made felt so sturdy. I don't know why sometimes I would just open and close it when I was bored. I I should have, again, looked up reviews or something before just buying it because the, the formula wasn't the best. It wasn't horrible. It wasn't as bad as that Maybelline one, for instance, but it wasn't great. And I realized the colors didn't speak to me as much as I thought they would. Like, I wasn't that into those cool tone, brighter purples. I like a bit more pinky leaning purples. And if they're gonna be bright, I want them to be like, bam, 
I am bright. But also, the formulation on every single shade was completely different. So the first one was like this shimmer that kind of worked in the crease because it definitely wasn't that intense on the lid, but then it kind of just faded and it didn't really do much. Just like, blah. Um, and the next one was the one that attracted me the most, I think. And it was this kind of vibrant purple matte, mid-tone matte. Um, that was probably the worst formula. Mm, I don't know, the, the top one was pretty bad too. But it was just not that pigmented. It took a lot of building and it didn't blend that well. Like, these weren't horrible, but I just didn't... It wasn't worth it, you know? And at the time, I still had my Wet n Wild Petalette Quad finished that one up last year I'm still proud of it um so whenever I reach for purple I would reach for that quad the dark shimmery one was nice like it was a fine formula um I didn't really have any complaints but it was just a dark shimmer and I don't reach for those as much as pale shimmers and the pale shades in that just weren't as good as the dark shades but that deep plummy matte that was really pretty as a liner, I liked it, but I could not justify keeping it for one shade when I could just use the dark shade in that Wet n Wild quad, um, even though I didn't like that one as much. TLDR, don't buy things on a whim. Do some, at least some research before you buy things. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's the summary of this video, but I hope you enjoyed this video, me just reminiscing about stupid things I did in the past. Um, and kind of the lessons I learned from it. I would love to hear some things that you bought in the past that ended up being a bad idea and lessons that you learned from that as well. Let me know if you'd be interested in watching another one of these videos. I think I have enough dumb purchases to make at least one more. But thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you have an amazing day. Bye!